Hi everyone! My name is DM and welcome back to my channel. So let's get started. So today's video is going to be on textured product photography backgrounds. So my last video I did it on basic photography backgrounds so definitely go back there and check it out. It's very thorough. It was a lot of fun to do. But this video, I wanted to focus on the textures. So the textures that I wanted to explore were sponge textured backgrounds, and then the use of cellophane and mylar. Ooh, that's so fun. <laughs> I'm so excited to see how this turns out. So according to Google, cellophane is a thin transparent sheet made of regenerated cellulose. It's low permeability to air, oils, greases, bacteria, and liquid water makes it useful for food packaging. So those are some fancy words for it's really good for food packaging because all of those things do not get through it. So I'm pretty sure you've seen cellulose in like those old school candies, the little um, strawberry ones. I'm pretty sure you've seen those. And um, any type of gift wrapping. And because it's good for gift wrapping, I have a tube of cellophane. So I got the Celebrate It brand in this very pretty iridescent color. And so I got this from Michaels on sale, so it was around $4. And the next texture I'm gonna use is Mylar. So I have packages of Mylar. So let's see what Google's definition of Mylar is. According to Google, Bopet, is the actual terminology for Mylar. Mylar is actually the brand name. And Bopet is a polyester film made from stretch polyethylene. Oh my gosh, these are big words. Terephthalate, these are big words for Elmo. And it is used for its high tensile strength, chemical and dimensional stability, transparency, reflectivity, gas and aroma barrier product properties and electrical insulation. Ooh. Wow. I feel like those are really big words just to say that it's used in a variety of different ways. One of them is that mylar is what your pop tarts are wrapped in. And the mylar that I have, emergency survival blankets. I got these for $2 each. And you can get rolls of mylar on Amazon, but it's so expensive. And so I was thinking there has to be a cheaper way to get something that is mylar, has a reflective surface, and is not going to be breaking the bank. So I will be using this cellophane because I love like the shiny properties it has. And I also like that mylar has really cool shiny properties as well. But mylar actually gives a really cool effect, which kind of gives it like a watery effect if you bounce light off of it. So I really want to try to see if I can replicate that in my photography. And you're going to be coming along with me to test that out. And the third way that I'm going to be using texture is with these sponges. So here's a natural sponge and here's just like a regular old school spongy sponge. And the fun thing about this is like, I'm gonna use this to create texture within the paint that I'm gonna be using. I think it'll be really cool to play around with like the texture on it, just to kind of see what I can do with the paint. So enough of me yapping, let's get into it. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm back again at Lowe's and I, wanted to pick up more wood i only need one board but i think i'm gonna pick up two just because i don't know i'd rather be safe than sorry and then i'm gonna pick up two more paint colors so i wanted to do a fun like dusty rose pink and then i also wanted to do kind of like a a warm white color so come with me and here I am in the paint aisle and I was stuck between two different pink colors. I ended up going with Sweetie Pie because I liked how it ran a little bit more cool. And here we are in the lumber aisle. We're going again with the 2x2 birch wood. Super affordable, pretty much smooth. All you kind of have to do is sand up the edges and you're good to go.
Stop number two for today. I'm gonna be doing a lot of driving, but I love instant gratification, so I need my stuff now. Um, I am at a craft store, so my favorite, Michael's, and I'm gonna be getting some sponges. And you're coming home with me. How to pick up these natural sponges. This is stop number three, and I'm going to pick up some Mylar at the Home Depot. They didn't have it at Lowe's, but I didn't want to pay 50 bucks for a roll. I could get it online, but you know, instant gratification. Ooh, come through $2 blankets. Here's what you'll need, natural sponges, mylar blanket, a foam roller, extra foam rollers, paint primer, mini roller trays, and paint samples. Sandpaper, a tarp, birch wood, and cellophane. So the first color that I picked up was Sweetie Pie. It's this gorgeous lighter toned pink color. And I liked it because it was a little bit cooler than the other colors, but I think it runs a little bit neutral. And the next color is Natural Sheepskin. It's this warm, beigey, off-white color. Hi, and here we are sanding our birch wood. Gotta get the corners in, make sure everything's smooth. It does matter in the end result and I am vacuuming right here because I don't want to get caught with the splinters. So this is the first coat of primer. I think that the primer is very necessary especially when you're painting with a lighter color. I'm gonna be painting with a lighter off-white color and a lighter pink so the color payoff will be way better when you get a good base in. I thought I was doing myself a service by waiting but the weather ended up being just as hot as it was last time. I'm shaking up my paint and this is my first coat. As you can see, you can see straight through that. So, so I was very happy to have a really good primer. second coat and here's the third coat I usually do two coats but I decided on three just to get an even coverage so you can either do this on the opposite side of the board or just get a new board and so this is how I am going to do the sponge texture so I'm getting my natural sponges it's just a multi-pack one's artificial one's natural And so I'm dipping it into the paint and then I'm just gonna pat it on. So you don't get like an even coverage, which is what I'm looking for. The white still shines through. So the first coat I'm gonna do is with the regular sponge. And I'm liking how the texture is turning out right here. And then I'm gonna take the natural sponge or the second layer just to kind of give it a different texture. I think that the natural sponge gives it an organic feel. Okay, I wanted to switch up the camera angle. Look at me, I'm getting better. <laughs> and so I'm continuing with the dabbing. I'm getting a little texture, I'm liking it. I like how the white is peeking through. I like how the texture is coming through. 
but I'm gonna be all the way honest even though the white is peeking through and I like how it's looking right now there was something a little bit off about it so I was going to finish this up and try to troubleshoot Dun, 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 dun. So I'm bringing in the cream color. So I'm mixing it in with the pink here. Just trying to like lighten up the pink. I thought that it would give it like a little extra dimension to the color. So I'm using natural sponge to sponge that on. Here's some glamour shots of how that ended up looking like, but I will be honest, I didn't see any significant results just from putting the white into the pink. So I used the natural sponge and I just dipped it into the white and then dabbed it on top. So we get this beautiful texture and I think it turned out well. So definitely you can't lighten up a color with just adding white, or at least I didn't put enough white into it. So with three coats of the natural sheepskin, I feel like it turned out a little bit darker than the swatch. It does photograph closer to the swatch though. And this is the final result of Sweetie Pie. Look how pretty the texture turned out. I think sheepskin on top of it turned out very well. So here I am doing the setup, fairly simple, nothing too complicated, using my wall as a to prop up the ba backboard. And the sun was popping off this day, so I wanted to make use of it. Gorgeous, gorgeous photos that I did have to edit just to bring some warmth and light to, but they turned out gorgeous. Here I am unfurling the cellophane. Honestly, I think it would have looked cool on the pink, but I think it would look cool on any of the colors. So I'm using my little clasp just to get a tight hold on it and then I'm scrunching it up for texture. Since it's cellophane and it's good at like holding in moisture and things like that, I wanted to just kind of test out photography with this beautiful yellow watermelon that I had. It was also delicious. Here I am doing more adjustments to the cellophane just to get the sunlight to hit it perfectly. Okay, this is me unfurling the Mylar blanket. Look how pretty the light was reflecting off of it. I was so stunned. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, these are going to turn out so nice. I was kind of worried because of the creases and the folds in it. I didn't know if it was going to give that natural like water effect. But then as I was playing around with it, I still think that I got the types of photos I was looking for. So I'm propping it up right here with a roller tray just to kind of give some height to it. I didn't want the product to sink and kind of look lost in the mylar so that height kind of gave it just that little bit of oomph that it still stood out but it could reflect perfectly on there. So holding the camera and just kind of like flapping the blanket around a bit kind of just like gave me a little shaky cam effect so maybe if you have like an assistant or whatever or just like kind of 
just have steadier hands than I do, I think this will be an easier task, but it still just like gave that movement that I was looking for. And here is the price breakdown. So for lumber, it was $16.16. Paint, it was $22.64. Textures, it was $16.46. Supplies, $35.70. For a grand total of $90.96. So this project in total was more than just the regular backgrounds. But also, if you're going to do these three different textures, yes, it's going to come up $90.96. But if you just want to do one of these textures, it'll be significantly less. If you already have a lot of these materials, then it will be significantly cheaper. But I will say that this is on the pricier side of my DIYs. Hi, welcome back. So what did you think? I felt like it all kind of just like came together i was very surprised i was really scared and worried about the mylar i wasn't sure that i was able to get that cool water reflective effect because it was so folded down that it was just like there was too many like it just didn't feel like it was going to be looking organic enough but it 100 percent surprised me and for two dollars that was way within my budget i couldn't have asked for anything more the cellophane ended up looking really cool. I felt like that's a cheap way to add texture and color and reflectiveness to your photos. And of course the sponge board, that kind of gave me issues. So the sponge board, that kind of gave me issues. So the issue that I ran into was I wasn't sure how to get that spongy look and feel. And so, I put the pink color down with the sponge, obviously, and then I used the more natural sponge on top to try to give it like that feel. So what I did with that, with the natural sponge, is I took the pink color with the cream, thinking that the cream would like give that pink color like a little bit, just like a more lighter color to it so that it would be subtle enough. But then when it dried down, it was completely just the same color. And I was like, oh no, what do I do? And so I wasn't able to get this on camera, but I took the natural sponge and the cream color, and then I just like lightly dabbed it. And I liked the look of it, but I kind of felt like the cream was kind of still overbearing, but it hadn't dried down yet. So I kind of freaked out. So I filmed myself dabbing over with the, regular spongy sponge with the pink color on top and it kind of muted it down turned out really nicely like I think it really came out with the texture that I was looking for so it turned out really nicely I felt like it gave me the texture that I was looking for and it photographed beautifully I think that I ended up within budget for this project and I feel like you can get it for even cheaper. So I feel like it came within budget for this project, like 100%. Like the cellophane that I got, you can get it at Michael's for $4, that's what I got. It's always on sale there. Or you can go to a dollar store and get cellophane. They have it there as well. Um, the Mylar blankets that I got, they're emergency blankets, of course I'm gonna keep, I got two of them and I'm gonna keep them just in case of emergency, obviously, but it was still such a great, like, effect that it gave me and for such a cheap amount. So Mylar online and I was looking for rolls of it, if you're doing like full body shoots you might want to invest in like a full roll of Mylar, but because I'm doing product photography and that's what I plan on focusing on it was so much easier just to get that blanket but rolls of mylar of course are gonna cost way more and they are a lot more but you can also I've seen it on sites such as Timu, Amazon I'm an instant gratification type of person so I need to get out and like get it so I think that the photography turned out really cool I wanted to focus on showing what these look like in natural sunlight so I didn't have any help of any type of other lighting but I think that the natural sunlight in my 
apartment is really nice. Like I am very blessed to have amazing sunlight from sunrise to sunset. So I wanted to, like even if you need to shoot these outside. So I wanted to show that you can do these product photography shoots at home. So I had a really good time. That watermelon was amazing. And I hope you guys learned so much from this. And I hope that this whole video was very helpful. Of course, comment, like, subscribe. Let me know if you do this as well and tag me in it. I think that would be so cool. And thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.